Fuck it, I'm recording. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Ari Swansea, your favorite YouTuber. No, I'm just kidding. There's no way I could be your favorite YouTuber because I'd be taking mad long breaks, yo. So, I'm here in my flannel that I got vintage shopping. And um, you can see I'm much smaller than this under here. But I like wearing oversized things, which a lot of people do. Um, what do I want to get into today? Uh, no. I see, that's not yours, no dog i have a dog uh come 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 here now she's frozen because i said no she's like am i in trouble i'm like yes you're in trouble do not chew on my coat bitch i'm in my closet i have a new couch in my closet which is great it came from the set of my talk show um which is not out yet but you will see and i inherited the couch because they had nowhere to put it which is great um because yeah i love this thing hi honey everyone say hi to baba Baba's here to disrupt the system. And, um, hi, I'm Baba. Do you want to sit here? You want to you wanna lay down? Whatever. Anyway, um, I hope everyone's having a cool start to their new year. Uh, it is the last day of January, and I'm so glad January is almost over, just because, I don't know, I feel like January takes forever. Like, December is gone like that. October gone like that, because you're looking forward to Halloween. And then, um... Yeah, I feel like January just drags her ass. And so, what do I want to get into today? Oh, I'm on TikTok. I'm newly on TikTok. Maybe I'll put a link below. My name's Aristocrat on there. It's the same name it is on everything else. Um, uh, I'm doing well on TikTok. I will say, since I started taking it seriously last week, I have literally 6,000 more followers than I had before because I only had like 200 followers. And now I've got like 6,000 followers and I guess that means something. I don't, I still don't know what I'm doing on TikTok if we're being completely honest. I'm just judging fashion shows and judging fashion walks. And um, you're doing great, sweetie. Nom, 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 nom. No, but, and I'm having a good time doing it. I'm having a really great time doing it. I will say like, it's something I can do. It's something I can do in two minutes because I am judgmental and I'm also qualified for the job because I have walked in probably over a thousand fashion shows. I literally have been a model for 18 years. So, you know, it's a long fucking time. Um, but yeah, I like it. It's ha I'm having fun now. Like before I like I, on TikTok, I just knew I didn't want to dance. I was like, I don't want to be 35 on take year old. Uh, I said, I don't want to be, Ugh. did you hear that? I just had a small stroke. <laughs> I just thought to myself, I don't want to be, because my manager and my agent, they're all like, get on TikTok, get on TikTok, you have to get on TikTok. And then Mike, uh, you all know Mike Mulderig, was like, get on TikTok, you gotta get on TikTok. And then uh, my friend Jake's like, you gotta get on TikTok. And I'm like, everyone says I gotta get on TikTok. And I didn't see a place for me there because I'm not teaching anyone anything, nor do I care to. And um, I don't, I'm not gonna dance for my phone. And and maybe that makes me sound super ancient and I really don't care. I'm really not going to dance to my phone as part of a trend. I'm just not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. And um, I'm not, not yucking your yum. If you do that and you like it, do your thing. But it's just not my thing. It's not... Um, I can dance. Fun fact, I was a cheerleader for all four years of high school and I was on the All-Star Squad uh, the last three years. How long was I on that motherfucker? I don't remember. Anyway, but, um, yeah, I can dance. I just, I just don't understand the point of dancing alone in my room. And I think it brings people joy. I think it's fun for some people. I just feel like I'd miss being on stage. I don't know. I, I like a, but some people are on a grand stage of like millions of followers, but I did not have that. I still don't have that. So like, I just, I don't see a point. Um, yeah, like maybe when, you know, AT&T calls me and says, can you do a TikTok dance for us? And they give me a hundred grand. Maybe you're going to see me dancing like an idiot in front of my uh, phone. But until then, uh, I'm not that bitch. So you will see me on TikTok judging others for their fashion walks. And I think I do a very fair job. I'm very fair. And so, um, yeah, what was... Okay, so I am going to answer some of your questions that I asked you for on Instagram. And it's been a while since I asked these, so if you recognize your question, please call me out in the comments. Uh, but one of them was, what are your favorite foods? And my favorite food is Thai food. Um, I tend to stick towards um, Asian tastes, 
because they usually have really great vegan and vegetarian options as well because a lot of food choices don't offer those because um like i love indian food but because i don't know like if it doesn't tell me exactly what's in there i usually don't end up ordering it because it usually they sneak goat cheese in there which is a paneer and so i've learned to just i was like i'll just order thai again thai don't use no cheese so they don't sneak cheese in there so not that they're sneaking cheese in there, it's just I don't know what I'm looking at. And so you can call me stupid, it's fine. But some some menus, and you know this from going on Seamless or Grubhub or whatever, um, or Uber Eats, um, they're less detailed than some. Like, so as a vegan, I'm a pesky vegan, so I eat seafood sometimes, but um, I don't do any dairy. And uh, I hate eggs, like, ugh. Um, no, and then um, I'm not big on bready carbs because I'm still a model even though I keep trying to quit. <laughs> not even kidding, I have actively tried to quit like a few times the past couple months. Um, but then I book something and then I have to stick around a little longer. But um, yeah, that being said though, I have a pretty picky palate. Like I can't just have whatever because they... In American cuisine, they will do something and they will always sneak dairy in there. And I call it sneaking at this point because they sneak dairy in the ingredients to like chips. I'm like, how the fuck is there dairy in here of like a hot chip? Like, I'm like, isn't this supposed to be spicy? Why is there dairy? Dairy like neutralizes spice, which means, bitch, I thought there was someone in my house. I was like, that is not what I wanted to hear. It's my neighbors upstairs being loud as hell. I was like, Am I about to get abducted right now on camera? Hope this saves to the cloud so that someone will find me. Anyway, um, what was I talking about? Yeah, but they sneak dairy into all types of stuff and I really hate that shit. And um, cause I like my diet, like it's been my diet for many, many years. And so I just don't like when it gets fucked up by someone else because I read very thoroughly and if, I still feel like I read it really thoroughly and I feel like it's just not giving enough information. I won't order it. I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna get a salad. And then for the salad, even if it doesn't say it has dairy, I'll be like, no cheese, no sour cream, no like ranch, just like, ugh, yuck. I just I don't like it. I don't even like it. Anyway, I know. So those are my favorite foods. I like Thai food. I like to keep it spicy as hell. I don't really love sweets, which is weird. When I was in my, when I was younger, I loved sweets. As I got older, I kind of kind of phased out. Like if some if there's someone offers me a piece of cake, I would rather have, um, I don't know, like a whole jalapeno. Like I would just rather have something more savory or spicy. I like spicy things. So, yeah, there's that. Now what? <laughs> someone asked. Uh, where do I see my career in ten years, and how can we help you get there? And uh, I don't know where I see it, um, hopefully going well. I've just kind of gone with where the wind blows me. Like I don't, I always have a goal for what I want and I just want to be successful and happy and work in entertainment. And those are my loose goals um, in my career. And the way that could, the, you all could help is sharing my TikToks, sharing my videos, liking my Instagram posts, the things you already know but don't do. <laughs> That's right, I'm calling all y'all out. But um, I still love my fans. Yeah, buy my merch. You know, I always say buy my merch. Really buy my merch. It helps, you know, it helps when you're walking around with my face on you in a country that I've never been to. It does help, believe it or not. Um, spreads awareness of the aristocracy. That's a play on my name if you didn't get it. Anyway, um, but yeah, that's all I can think of. And so, yeah, I just, I hope I am happy, healthy, and successful in an entertainment career of whichever I end up being. It could be acting, it could be hosting, it could be modeling, it could be something that hasn't been invented yet. Um, it could be judging others. I would love to judge others for a living. I think that sounds really fun. But um, yeah, yeah, that's all. That's all. And you can hear my teeth clicking because I need Botox in my, I need more Botox right here. That's, in case my teeth come clicking because I've got a hard bite, um, like a pit bull. 
Jesus, not like a shark. Uh, what is the next one? Oh, okay, this question. Do you think Vogue is still a major fashion influence? And my answer to that is when Anna Winter stops being invited or revered at these major fashion shows, that's when I think the influence will be gone. Because right now, whether you're influenced by Vogue or not, you think this has nothing to do with you. Yeah, no, you're being, you're absolutely influenced by Vogue and what Anna Winter thinks and has to say because they're inviting her to sit front and center at every show. And so the designers are literally designing with her taste level in mind nine times out of 10, whether you wanna believe that or not. And so you can think it's not influencing you. It is because she is Vogue and she is the influence of the designers and she kind of tells them what they're gonna do. And so um, there's more steps than that. She's not calling them up and saying, you're going to do this, but they absolutely have her in mind when they're designing a collection because you got to impress the queen and you want to be featured in Vogue. People still want to be featured in Vogue. That's not going to stop anytime soon. And so that is, that is a big influence. And so I think they're still a power player. You know, whether they're selling magazines or not, they're still a power player. She is ripping that toy apart. I don't love that. It better not have anything crazy in there because I did not buy that for her. Next question. Oh, okay, work. It's the last thing I'm going to do, right? No. No, it's not. Okay. So this is a story time. Someone wanted a story time of a time uh, of something that was scandalous that happened to me. And I thought, oh, you know what? A few years ago, uh, I started talking to this guy. We met at the Abbey and he was a dancer there. Um, but I think it was just for the evening because now he's a dancer, not at, is it Chippendales? I don't think he's a Chippendales dancer. I think he's the other kind. What is the other kind of exotic male dancer? But he was a really nice guy. He was cool. He was really hot. He looked like Superman. And, um, but I thought he was really nice. Anyways, he would text me like he was super cool, respectful, sweet guy in person, but then he would text me like crazy, like entitled shit, like something you'd send to someone with lower self-esteem than me. And my self-esteem is like, like way up there. Like it's, I don't, I don't just jump how high when you say jump. Um, or I don't ask how high when you say jump. Sorry, I fucked that up. Anyway. But, um, another mini stroke I just had. No, but he was texting me kind of like aggressive things like, come over, come over. Why don't you come over? You should just come over here. And I'm like, oh no, I actually have a bunch of stuff to do. We'll ditch, he'd be like, we'll ditch your friends and come over here. I'm like, do you think this is charming or sexy? This is, um, pig headed and douchey. Like you're kind of gross, dude. Like I'm telling you, and any guy that I'm talking to, if they want to hang out with me, you have to make a plan. Uh, I am popular to a fault in the sense where I say yes to just about everything. And so I already have plans. I have plans all week because someone else already asked me to hang out with them here. Or I'm going to the movies with this friend or it's this friend's birthday party or it's I'm supposed to be having an agency meeting. Um, just, I've got things to do. Like, I'm a busy person. And so he was just kind of like, in my, like, you know, just texting me for like, I think it was like a couple, couple days in a row, just being kind of aggressive. And I was kind of like, getting more and more turned off. I'm like, okay, I don't, cause I don't care what you look like. I can pull another one of you any day of the week. Um, I'm pretty, I'm confident. Um, and we're all ugly to somebody because I'm sure I'm not someone's cup of tea. So you're someone's hearing that and going, no, the fuck you're not. I'm like, okay, whatever, dude. Anyway, I've got contracts. Um, so that's say otherwise, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> no, but so, um, but, you know, he's a good looking guy. He was nice at first. And then, you know, he showed his ass in texts. And I was just like, okay, no longer answering his texts. And so, you know, Fun fact, guys, girls aren't just talking to you in the talking stage. They are talking to maybe several other guys. Um, I say, I say always, I always usually have like at least three guys on the burner. It's a lot less these days. I don't have the patience or the energy. Um, right now, I'm only talking to one. And so that is really different for me. 
Um, that's a different story altogether because that is a very different story. Uh, it is a down and death story. No, but, um, but before, like I would talk to you, before the pandemic, I would say, because since the pandemic, my whole dating style and life has changed. But um, before the pandemic, I would always be talking to a few guys at once, just because one is gonna let you down. That's just the way it's been. I'm a black trans woman. My trans, my, my record has been to end up single at the end of every relationship. So um, I've not had my, I've not found my person. And so do I believe in there just being one person? I don't know, who cares, who cares? But I haven't found a match for me that's withstood um, the trials and tribulations that are me being trans, because that's usually the deal breaker. Um, even though they know that, they know that going into it, but they just can't handle the reality of it all. And so that is a different story that we will get into later. It is just, ugh, it's a heartbreak story and I'll probably cry on camera. So ooh, maybe I'll get an Emmy. Do you get Emmys for YouTube? No, I'm just kidding. No, but um, yeah, it's, it's, some, it's been some rough, rough breakups for me, but um, never, I just hate when it's not like personality based or like incompatibility based. It's just, you know what? You're trans and it's not gonna work out. I'm like, Anyway, I know, sorry, trigger warning, sorry, I shouldn't have done that because I'm sure someone's gonna report this now and say I'm inciting violence. I'm not, no, but I just mean like, it's just one of those things where you're just like, I wish I never did this, but I did learn a lot. And so anyway, back to this story. And so this other guy I was talking to wanted to take me shopping and it's very funny. And so I don't, well, I don't think it started out that way. I think we were on like, a date and we st we just went like for a walk and like so we were walking into stores and I was like oh my god I love this and so he's like oh I'll get that for you and I was like no absolutely not I can get it myself I'm fine like because I don't I also don't like guys having something over on me because we're if we're in a talking stage you're not my boyfriend and so I don't want you to buy me anything that uh makes you think that you own me now because you don't um and I can buy it myself I'd rather buy it myself and so um yeah, I sound super damaged right now. It's just because I don't like, I'm not, I'm just not that girl who's like using guys for things. I'm hoping that you're a good match for me. And so that's not been the case so far. So back to this story. So we walk into a store and he's just like, oh, let me get this for you. And I was just like, oh no, no, I can get it. I can get it. Um, he's like, well, suit yourself, whatever. He's like, okay. He's like, all right. And so I'm just, um, it's just like, like a cute little bag. I was like, oh my God, I'm totally gonna get this for myself and um, it wasn't very expensive. And we go into another like row of the store and there is the Superman guy. Like, looked like he just left the gym or something. Like his arms are out, he looks really hot or whatever. And he looks at me and his eyes light up. And then the other guy I'm talking to is also really hot. <laughs> <laughs> walks up behind me and I was like, you know what? I will let you get this for me. And he goes, oh, great, thank you. He's like, thank you, I really wanna get this for you. I said, okay, yeah, thank you, wonderful. And so, um, like, it was just, it's story story time. Like, it's just very like, dude, this is a lesson for all men. Um, don't talk shit to anybody or just like be demanding or entitled or just gross. It was just so pig headed and like, toxic masculinity demanding me to drop everything to hang out with him and it just it just wasn't kind and it wasn't personable and it wasn't like this person that I met who was like oh my god I want to get to know you you know you seem really cool and you're so beautiful and I'd love to take you out sometime that person turning into come over drop all that what are you doing come over come over and I'm like ugh, like you sound gross like you're fucking douchebag like douche canoe like I don't that's not how you talk to girls. Like, are you nuts? Has this ever worked before? I don't think it has. And if it has, that girl wasn't worth a damn. Like, I don't know why you think that's hot. Anyway, poor thing. I, would, I wouldn't wish that upon anybody. And so, but he saw me anyways, but, um, and I never heard from him again after that though. And I thought that was so great. And um, I didn't end up talking to that other guy for much longer because I think he moved somewhere for business. I don't remember. Anyway. But because uh, this is, I don't know, three, four years ago. God, my God, it was almost five years ago this happened because I'm remembering we just had two years of a pandemic. We're going to our junior year of the pandemic. So yeah, that was a while ago. Anyway, 
But I remember thinking like, I felt really powerful in that moment. It was very affirming of like, you know what? I am that bitch and I don't need to settle for assholes like that. Like I was a perfectly nice guy who respected me and respected my boundaries and um, was trying to do something nice for me genuinely. And he never held it over my head that he bought me that. He was just like, all right, well, I gotta move for work. Um, take care. I'm like, take care. Love the purse. <laughs> but <laughs> Anyways, that's my life, and um, there's that story, and I feel like I want to tell one more story, but this is already 20 minutes, and I feel like that's long enough. <sighs> but yeah, I never heard from that guy again. I've seen him out every once in a while, like, in West Hollywood, and I just, you know, smile and keep walking. I'm like, you weren't good enough. You're a piece of shit. You need to go to some sort of therapist that teaches you how to talk to women. Um... God, I feel like I should just end it on that note, huh? I can feel like some of you are like, no, keep going. Okay, fine, I'll tell one more story. You know what, I'll tell a shitty story. I was literally days away from moving to LA and I had already broken my lease in New York like I lived at my parents' house for two months after I broke my lease in New York because I had to keep going back and forth to New York, um, which is a one hour flight four hour drive um but i flew mostly because i flew for free because my parents work for the airline both of them at the time um and so my sister also works for the airline and so does her husband it's a bunch of pilots but um then my mom's a flight attendant but um or was she's retired now but at the time this is eight years ago literally eight years ago like to the month because it was january eight years ago I got confirmed for a Barney's campaign. This is Barney's New York. And uh, it was, they were getting super inclusive. It was gonna be shot by Bruce Weber. And if you remember, Pesh, uh, who is a trans model, whose tie was in it, and Laith Ashley, who is an ex of mine, uh, who's now a friend, we're just friends, but um, that's how you know him, is that he's an uh, ex of mine. But um, he was also in it, and I'd never met him yet. Like I hadn't met him yet, I didn't know who he was. But it was a super inclusive campaign to be shot in black and white. And I was confirmed for like two or three weeks to do this job. And I really needed the money because I was moving to LA with nothing, like two suitcases and a bunch of pending transactions from other people that owed me money. Like I, cause in, mo in the modeling world, they have like 30, 60 and 90 days to pay you, depending on what the, but the contract says that she signed for whatever job you did and so that's a different story but um yeah i was going with almost no money because it cost me everything to move from new york to virginia because I, I had a storage unit now that I, all my stuff was in um new york is just expensive i was waiting to get my deposit back for the apartment because the deposit was something like three or four grand like it's enough to help you move if you don't have any money because i left new york because i wasn't doing well like the last year i was there the last five months were really bad like i was just like why am i modeling anymore and um so i tried to quit <laughs> and so i was moving to la to just date surfers and work at starbucks but i've said that a million times i'm sure you've all heard that story if you're real fans of mine um I just wanted to be a normal person that was happy and lived in the sun by the beach and that's all I wanted and so I wanted a simpler life and I could have been just fine with that I promise you that um so I was confirmed for this job and I'm literally flying myself to New York because um I live in Virginia at the moment because I'm at my parents house because I'm literally moving to LA in days and I get a call from the Barney's reps and they canceled me that morning. They said, hey, so we're not gonna need you today. I said, are you serious? You're, you're canceling me today. I've been confirmed for two weeks, which means we've signed contracts, we've done fittings, like, and like, yeah, no, we're not gonna need you. And so I hang up the phone and my mom was getting ready to drive me to the airport. And I was just like, I got, I got, Fired. I didn't even get there. I just got canceled on. And um, I had like a breakdown. Like it was a breakdown because I just, like my modeling career was over. It was the symbol that it was over because I just knew maybe I could do something if 
Barney's like the Barney's campaign happened and then took off because I hadn't been in anything that big in a while and I just thought oh my god Barney's I love Barney's like I would shop there and now I would never shop there again but they closed and now I'm glad they closed because I'm a petty spiteful bitch and because they didn't pick me it's probably why they closed you probably needed to be a little more inclusive bitch anyway <laughs> that's my real that's my real attitude by the way anyway no, but, um, yeah, I was really heartbroken and I really needed that. And, um, it's crazy cause I probably would have met Leigh sooner and probably would have known we weren't meant to be together just then. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm saying that cause he's watching this. No, me and Leigh, they're friends now. We're good friends. Um, we're established as just friends. So please stop shipping us. It's been five years since we dated. Like, please relax on that relax I hate when people do that they're like oh I'm still rooting for you guys I'm like we are just friends you need to relax you need to relax you watched a show five years ago it lasted less time than the time it's been passed like please stop stop it it's weird it's weird stop obsessing over relationships that aren't yours it's so fucking weird I think it's so weird anyway um well, that's my stories. Yeah, I was heartbroken at Barney's, or not at Barney's, in my mom's hallway upstairs, where I just, like, I literally had that, like, Little Mermaid moment where she just backs up to the wall and f slides down and just starts crying. I just, like, it was, like, my last, my last go at it before I quit modeling. And I was like, okay, I quit now. I quit right now. And um, my mom was really sweet because she was there for me and she was just like, oh, honey, I'm sorry. It's okay, fuck them, they're garbage. And I was like, <laughs> I just wanted one more job, just one more good job before I left, before I left the industry. And um, luckily I moved to LA and two weeks later, or like three weeks later, I had to meet Cecilio because I was a writer. Um, freelance writer and I was interviewing him for um, a documentary he was doing or that he had done and um, that's when he built Slay Models right around me and so the rest is history now I'm sitting in my closet um, and I'm glad that things happened the way they did and so that's another lesson is that I'm glad I didn't get Barney's Barney's folded and I didn't so Fuck you, Barneys. This bitch is still here, still working, still modeling. <sighs> that feels good. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, don't give up. Just because someone says you can't do something just means you can't do it with them. So please keep following your dreams and all that jazz. But uh, I'll put the link to my merch, my cash app and my Venmo because I still need fucking money because I still don't book them big ass gigs. I'm dying out here. I'm sitting in a room of free clothes, for Christ's sake, and a free couch. Am I blessed? Yes. But, but, I didn't pay for any of this. So it's like, I would love to have expendable income, just like the white cis supermodels. <laughs> the black trans ones is still just doing okay. But yeah, I'll put my merch link, I'll put my Venmo, my Cash App, and I will put I guess now my TikTok link, because I have a TikTok and it's going well, apparently. Um, okay, I'll see y'all later, but this was fun. I did it because I had a meeting today and now, you know, I'm dressed, I'm showered, fuck it, make a video. All right, bye y'all, it's almost been half an hour.